Hey, friends. Today I'm gonna need your help gathering some food for one of my critter friends. Can you guess which one? Well, come on and join me on. Hey friends, I'm here at Choyas Lake, San Diego, California. People come here all the time to run, fish, play, or walk. Every now and then you can see some animals or critters running around here, especially squirrels. You know, this time in fall is when the squirrels are collecting their acorns for the winter. Just like my friend Nibbles here. Hey Nibbles, there's two of your friends now. <laughs> you know, those two remind me of a story about two squirrels named Tim and Avi. Tim and Avi's Nutty Adventure by Uncle Adam. Up on the hill in the tallest oak tree lived Avi the blind squirrel and his son Timothy. Fall had arrived and winter was coming. The animals were excited and the forest was humming. They all gathered food to last through the storm and extra soft padding to keep their nests warm. The fire crackled and the cold wind blew. Avi saved all year but had one more thing to do. With his walking stick, Avi tap checked on his supply, but it was lower than usual, much to his surprise. Soon snow would cover the entire forest floor, so they needed more nuts, enough to fill every drawer. Braving the cold, they left in a hurry to find the last nuts before winter's fury. They searched through the forest for the last acorns, but couldn't find any, only bushes with thorns. They needed nuts quick, or by Christmas they'd be done. There'd be no more nuts in storage. No, not even one. Their stomachs growled, and they didn't know what to do. Then Timmy remembered the legend from the zoo. If you were hungry for something, just go and ask Pete. No matter what you crave, he will find what you seek. So Timmy told Avi to go wait at the pier while he ran to find nuts, enough for the year. To the pier Avi went, the safest way he knew, while dreaming about his favorite acorn stew. At the gate, Timmy arrived with no time to spare. He began to search for Pete, but he didn't know where. With no time to waste, he started to look around every corner and in every nook. He checked every cage and even the playground, but no matter where he searched, Pete couldn't be found. He asked every friend and he begged and he pleaded, but no one knew Pete and to their homes they retreated. And just as Timmy was about to give in, he brushed back his hair and lifted his chin. He checked all around and he zipped and zagged. He wouldn't let down his dear old blind dad. Then the sun started setting and the street lights came on. So Timmy left defeated and he knew Pete was gone. He walked across the field to the big wooden pier where Avi sat alone, quiet and sincere. Timmy took his time thinking of what he would say. Maybe they try again tomorrow or perhaps another day. He arrived at the pier feeling so incomplete Despite his best efforts, Timmy couldn't find Pete. Then Avi stood up and gave a big laugh because Pete was there swimming and playing with his calf. So Avi explained what had happened that day while Timmy searched the zoo, much to his dismay. When Avi arrived early that afternoon, the great big whale Pete had a very sad tune. Pete had been swimming near the island with the tree 
when something blocked his hole and it became hard to breathe. He thrashed about and he ran amok, but thankfully found Avi, who removed what was stuck. Funny enough, blind Avi found his nut in Pete's water spout, which was almost blocked shut. As thanks for the help, Pete agreed to give passage to Avi and Tim and all of their baggage. So Pete swam them over to the private island shore where they found lots of acorns and so much more. Then up in the air flew Avi and Tim from Pete's water spout with a big happy grin. Softly they landed in the giant tree's fold. Their persistence paid off. They would survive the cold. Now they would always have plenty to eat and they lived happily ever after thanks to a great whale named Pete. Some say it was just a matter of luck, but it can happen to you if you never give up. What a great story. Aw, oh, but now Nibbles are scared she doesn't have enough acorns for the winter. What can we do? Hmm. I know. Let's gather around and search out the area for more acorns, and maybe we'll see some more of her friends. Hey, look at these. That's a great start. Did you know that squirrels have four large front teeth? They're made for gnawing and grow throughout their life. Just like that squirrel over there. Look at these. These are perfect for nibbles. What do you think? <laughs> you heard her. Let's go find some more. You know, squirrels eat a variety of different types of food, from fruit, insects, to a variety of nuts. They gather the nuts in fall and store them until the winter. They also look around the ground for these types of food. Just like that one over there. Check it out. Huh, found some more. What do you think, Nibbles? We're looking pretty good right now. Let's go find some more. Did you know that some squirrels can run up to 20 miles per hour? They can also jump up six feet from the ground. That's incredible, Nibbles. Oh wait, I think I see two of Nibbles' friends right now. Check it out. Wow, we're doing great. And I think I know where we can find just a few more. Wow, check out this playground. You know what squirrels and kids have in common? They just love to play. Hey, let's see if we can find some acorns around here. You found some. I think you're gonna be all right. What do you think, Nibbles? <laughs> well, you're quite welcome. But I didn't do it alone. I had some help from my friends. Thank you, friends. Well, that's gonna do it for us today. I'd like to thank you guys so much for joining me on that adventure. Friends, if you like that story, click on the link down in the description below. 
I'd like to thank our authors one more time for sharing this story with us. And remember, you're only limited by the thoughts you think. So think happy thoughts. Farewell, friends. <laughs>